These chimpanzees are in the wilds of East Africa, living freely as chimps have done since time immemorial. These chimpanzees have spent most of their lives in cages and in misery, in a biomedical research laboratory. Yeah. Oh. They're still behind bars, but now their endless days of pain and terror are behind them, for this is a retirement sanctuary. You want it? There you go. Would you like the fork? Powerful animals and potentially dangerous, they need to be enclosed. But the cages here are roomy, and the loving care they get is a far cry from what they experienced at the lab. The moving spirit behind this sanctuary is Gloria Grow. It was her dream, and she's dedicated her life to making it come true. The chimp house is part of an animal refuge established earlier by Gloria and her husband Richard. Come on, guys. A veterinarian, he shares her love of animals. Together they set up the Fauna Foundation in the Canadian countryside near Montreal, which provides a home for abused and abandoned creatures of all kinds. But as much as she loves these exotic waifs and strays, for Gloria this wasn't enough. Oh, and this one, this little girl, this little girl. Just before I turned 40, I started to see that I had to do something with my life. I felt that I had to give something back, um, do something important, uh, just be here for a reason. She found her reason at a workshop near Seattle, organized by Dr. Roger Fouts, who pioneered communication with chimps using American Sign Language. And we all had to sit in this room, and Dr. Fouts came in and said, so, why are you here? So everyone took their turn and had to answer, and I just blurted out, I want to start a sanctuary. World-famous chimp authority Jane Goodall had established sanctuaries for chimps in Africa, but there were none in North America. She visited a biomedical lab in New York that was closing down. Surprisingly, the chief vet at this research facility shared her feelings and was trying to find foster homes for all his chimps rather than see them go to one of the most notorious research labs in the U.S. When the news got to Gloria, she spoke to Richard. She calls me up, she says, you know, um, Richard, there's um, chimpanzees uh, in laboratories in the States that are being put up for adoption. He says, you know, it'd be a great idea if we did this. I said, sure, you know, it's, I, I, I kind of said, you know, it's my wife. I'll, I'll look into it and we'll, uh, it'll probably never happen. So I, th actually that day I got to work and I started phoning government agencies and it, n nothing was impossible. The lab that was shutting down was LEMSIP, New York University's laboratory for experimental medicine and surgery in primates. Dr. James Mahoney, the senior research vet, was desperate. Unless he found homes for his chimps, they would be shipped to another lab where he couldn't protect them. He agreed to meet Gloria and Richard. I thought at first it was a crazy idea because they knew nothing about chimps. Um, they had this dream in mind, but it takes a lot more than just a good heart to go about taking on such a huge responsibility. Thanks to Mahoney, LEMSIP was one of the more humane animal research labs. Still, on their first visit, Gloria and Richard were stunned by what they saw. The screaming and the noise and the smell hit us. It was so overpowering, it was unbelievable. You could hear the rattling of the cages, you could see chimpanzees banging, 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 throwing themselves, spinning. Uh, spitting, throwing feces, it was horrible. As if all this wasn't bad enough, at the end of the visit there was more shocking news. Dr. Mahoney um, looked at us and said, these are the chimps that can come to live with you in Canada if you're interested. Um, some of them are HIV positive, is that a problem? 
Richard looked at me and said, that's a problem for me. I said, it's not for me. Richard returned to Lamsip several times, and on each visit, the plight of the chimps troubled him more. Finally, he decided he could live with the HIV issue. The question now was whether they could build a facility in time to meet Dr. Mahoney's deadline. We found out very quickly that if the chimps were not out of the lab within six months, they'd be heading off to one of the worst laboratories in America. Getting permission to import seven HIV-infected chimps into Canada had been a long and arduous process. Even so, as they and eight younger uninfected animals headed for the border, construction was still underway at their new home. And then on that day in September 1997, Chuck pulled down the driveway. I knew they were coming, but I didn't believe they'd make it. I couldn't believe it was really going to happen. And there they were. These guys deserve it so much. It was an incredible moment. And when they opened the doors, and there they were, all inside, skinny little people, lots of hair missing, terrified, frightened, not knowing where they were going. <laughs> After years spent in cramped, comfortless cages, the first thing the chimps did was build sleeping nests with blankets put out by Gloria. Then, bedded down for the night, they waited for morning to see if this place would be better or worse than where they'd come from. Nothing could have prepared me for what was about to happen. I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking, oh, of course they'll be happy to be in their new home. Of course they'll love their new life. But they had left something behind. They left all they'd ever know. It's not that they didn't trust me, I guess. Well, they, clearly they didn't trust me. It was, they didn't know what my motives were. They didn't know what was going on. Um, and so it was hell the first few months. I was grabbed and tripped and clothes ripped off me. I still have shirts with the fronts ripped off. Any trick in the book, I had it pulled on me. And I started to question after the first month, what have I done? One of the most aggressive chimps was a mature male called Billy Joe. Billy Joe is probably one of the most angry fellows that lives in the chimp house. He's constantly banging and displaying and venting and throwing things. No one really knows where Billy Joe was born. But we do know that he's around 33 years old. He spent the first 15 years of his life entertaining us in the circus. One of the saddest things I saw was when he was really frightened and he started to do handstands and he started to do lip flips and clap his hands. It was as though he was saying, if I entertain you, will you not hurt me? If I do this for you, will you do something for me? Please don't hurt me. Billy, like so many other chimpanzees in entertainment, had his teeth removed. His teeth were knocked out with hammer and chisel. There's still the little remains of his teeth in his gum line. Billy Joe was 15 when he went into Lemsip, where he was infected with hepatitis. For the first few years, he had a liver biopsy every other week. Billy chewed his thumbs off after waking up from uh, an invasive procedure in the laboratory. There was no one there to stop him from doing it, and he was obviously in a great deal of pain. Laboratories are not obliged at all to give uh, pain medication to any of the primates or any animals. And so 
because of the pain, he just stuck his fingers in his mouth and just chewed on them. Sue Ellen grew up with Billy Joe and performed with him in the circus before she also ended up in the lab. She was using hepatitis research and then eventually she was infected with the HIV virus. She's been violated in every possible way. In the days after the chimps arrived, Gloria knew that somehow she had to gain their trust. The question was how, after almost every human they'd known had betrayed them. You'd probably go up to someone in a little bit of a submissive way because you're not trying to be threatening. You're trying to show that you're, you want to be friends. So what the chimps see from that is that you're, you know, you're not trying to do anything terrible to them. Um, they look into your eyes and they're looking to get something back. She's so smart. Oh, and she's so pretty. Your eyes say so much and I would be in front of someone and I'd be Thank saying, you. oh my God, what happened to you? And all of a sudden, they see that you are feeling for them. They see your empathy. Now here, you take it from there because you know how you like to be grabby. Oh, careful. And they respond to that 100%. There you go. That's my little girl. She's getting so smart. <laughs> Slowly, Gloria's patience and gentleness began to win them over, but one older female didn't respond. In the first months Jeannie was with us, every time a person walked in the door, she'd have these outbursts. She'll just start spinning, spinning, spinning. And she starts to spin so quickly that she, of course, throws herself off balance. Jeannie was probably born in the wild in the 70s. She has spent her whole life in a cage. Had a nervous breakdown during the HIV studies in the laboratory, and so was put on medication to help her cope with her life in the lab. She doesn't fit in anywhere in life. She doesn't fit in with humans, and she doesn't fit in with her own kind. And so she's forced to live in solitary confinement, even in her sanctuary. She's the first chimp that ever looked into my eyes in the lab, and um, her eyes were screaming. Get me out of here. But Jeannie was so ill that Lemsip planned to euthanize her. Gloria wouldn't allow it, and after a long struggle, she finally succeeded in getting Jeannie to the Fauna Foundation. Not everyone was keen to take the HIV-infected chimps. In particular, Pat Ring, the previous owner of the farm who stayed on to help care for the many animals. redneck cowboy type guy, um, you know, rough and rugged. He was pretty worried initially when the chimps moved in. He didn't think I should rescue older chimps. He thought it would be harder to work with them. He thought I should get, you know, rescue young, younger individuals. Uh, he was terrified of the HIV virus. When it first started, I was told Gloria, we don't need none of these chimps with HIV, and it was the young guys I wanted, and I was scared of mosquito bites. Uh, I was totally ignorant to HIV. Before the chimps moved here, oh, we used to go visit them in the lab for nearly eight months before they actually moved in. And so on different visits, we'd get to meet different individuals. And there, I remember the day I met Tom, Tom Chimpanzee. And I came back home and I said to Pat, Pat, you've got to meet this guy. He's just like you. Pat met Tom in the lab. And I remember Tom looking into Pat's eyes and Pat looking into Tom's eyes and there was an instant, instant connection. What was amazing about this instant friendship was that Tommy was one of the chimps infected with HIV. Suddenly that didn't seem to matter to Pat anymore. Give me a big teeth. Give me a big teeth. And in fact, the likelihood of contracting the virus from a chimp is remote. 